three, two, one. This is Phil Chandler, and I'm standing here beside, as you may have gathered, a flow hive. And a flow hive is really just an adaptation to a standard beehive. This is a standard Langstroth uh, brood box down the bottom here. And this is a similar size and shaped box that contains the special flow hive gadget. And, and if I open it, you'll be able to see what I mean. And this bit comes off. Well, should come off. There's bees already coming out. Okay, so now you can see where the bees are. There's a queen excluder right here. So only the worker bees can get up into this part of the hive. And what they are doing or should be doing is putting honey away in these chambers, in, in the cells into in these boxes here. And we're going to um, talk a little bit about how this works. So you can see, because we're effectively looking at the end of what is transparent plastic honeycomb. And so you can see right here, there's some cells that have actually got honey in them. They're already full of honey. And there are some, there are quite a few that haven't got honey in there empty. But further back in there, the, the chances are that there's quite a lot of honey. What we don't know is whether or not it's capped. Now, because of the construction of this, um, this, this box, we can't see whether individual combs are capped or not. What we can do is open the window at the side here and we can see whether or not the end comb is capped because the end comb is usually the last one to be capped. Now we can tell looking through that window that that comb is not in fact capped. So we can deduce from that well, what can we say? We know that that one isn't capped. We, we don't know anything about the central combs. It could be that they've already been capped or they're still waiting to be capped. We don't know yet. So I'm gonna put that window back on. Um, so now to decide whether we're going to be able to extract honey from one of these, uh, one or more of these, uh, we're going to have to go actually go in the normal way down through the roof. So I'm gonna put this on because we don't know how the bees are going to react to this. Ow. This one just stung me through the shirt. I'm going to put my glasses on because who knows what I may have to look at. Right. So we're good. So I'm going to take the roof off. So I'm just going to pop the lid. This colony has been in here for two years. They've had no treatments. Last year, they didn't really put very much honey in, in, the, um, in the super at all. But then we didn't get much honey at all last year anyway. So here are our combs. So what we're trying to find out is, is there honey in these artificial combs? Now, we're going to have to be quite careful how we get these out because they are, it looks like they're well glued in with propolis. Um, and I'm also, I'm being very careful that, because I don't want to break anything. Um, being plastic, this stuff is, it's reasonably tough, but it's also quite brittle. These individual um, combs, I keep calling them combs for want of a better word really, but they are effectively artificial plastic honeycomb, so I think that's a reasonable word to use. I'm going to attempt to lever out one of these here in the middle, I think. Mm. Uh, okay, okay, I can feel it's moving. Um, it's 
there's a certain amount of brace combing going on here so and bees are getting a bit excited I'm just going to give them a little bit of water to cool them down right this, this is now free so I can now lift the this is a stainless steel cable that's holding the um, holding the whole structure together you'll see what I mean in a minute there's another one at the bottom I'm just struggling a bit with the propolis on here ah. there we go okay it's free now so I'm going to lift this up and you can see that in fact the central the central comb does appear to be 90% capped and this is a first for us this is the third year we've been running these and this is the first time we've had a really quite well capped comb now there are places on it that aren't capped. There's, there's, there's a group of bees down here, uh, some of whom have heads in their cells. And there's another group up here, some of whom have heads in cells. Now, the way this works is that, if I can turn it around slightly like this, there is, I'm gonna rest I'm going to rest the comb back, just back in its slot like that, so I can let go of it. Right. <clears throat> this, this is the, this is the flow hive key. It's a long L-shaped, well, screwdriver, if you like. That's the shape, anyway. And the way that, that, that these things work is that you insert this key into a hole into a slot which I am exposing now that little thing comes out the, the the screwdriver thing goes into this slot here all the way down to the end and then it gets turned through I think 90 well yes obviously 90 degrees that what that does the the, the structure here is that these are strips of plastic arranged vertically held together by these stainless steel wires, one at the top, one at the bottom. And when you turn this lever, what's going to happen is that half of these plastic strips are going to move by the distance of approximately half of a cell height. So in other words, about, I guess, about three millimetres, two and a half, three millimetres, something like that. And that is going to create a, because the cells are angled towards the centre, as, as, as all honeycomb is, that's going to create a cascade effect by which the honey is going to run down inside into this trough at the bottom, and then we would insert this plastic, mm, what would you call it, spigot, um, into the hole. I forget which way around it goes now, probably that way. Um, we would insert that into the hole, and then the honey would run out of here into whatever container we have ready to take it. Now the problem we have of course there, there, uh, there are several possible problems with that. One is that if you have honey that is set, in other words something like oilseed rape or, or even worse ivy honey in, in here then it's not going to turn into a liquid. In fact even, even heather honey uh, which is uh, thixotropic, in other words it, it's, it's more of a jelly than a liquid, um, is going to have honey, is going to have trouble running down inside here into the bottom of the um, in, into the bottom trough so only certain honeys are going to work now this the honey that we've got in there is in fact liquid i can see that quite it's quite obvious that it's a liquid because if i just do that you can actually see the liquid as it exposed so this is a you know a, this is a, a, a typical devon wildflower honey and it would be possible to extract this frame by the standard flow hive technique of turning this tap and tapping it off the bottom. Now of course the problem with it is that if we do that we are going to most likely going to injure quite a large number of bees because there are a lot of bees here with heads in cells. 
Now this is the, well, it's one of the two central cones. So if anything's gonna be capped in here, it'll be these two central cones. This is uh, only, as I said, about 90% capped. We've got a number of bees that are still working on these cells. And therefore we do not want to turn this key and risk uh, injuring uh, a bunch of bees as well as potentially polluting the, the honey with, you know, bits of bee. So um, this, this is one of the, the, if you like, the weaknesses of this system is that you need to be sure that your frames are properly capped before you extract. And the only way of knowing that for certain is to actually lift them out and have a look. So, you know, that's something you have to bear in mind with one of these hives. Now, as it stands, it's now uh, early September and we would normally around here expect the ivy to start producing uh, nectar any time now. So once ivy gets into the cells of a comb, it will set very, very quickly, like within days. And it sets really hard. It sets like, uh, well, I describe it as Blackpool Rock, but some of you won't know what Blackpool Rock is, but it's a very hard, um, sugary sweet. So. And once that's happened, of course, there's no possible way you're ever going to get it out of here without applying heat uh, in some form, which obviously we, we would like to avoid doing. So we've got a, we've got a dilemma now. We've, we have to make a decision because if we leave this as it is, um, yes, they're, they're going to complete these cells. Yes, they're going to put nectar in there. Some of it may be IV and okay if it's only that amount of IV and if we catch it quickly we might get away with it. However the outer frames and we we know this one isn't capped because we can see it from the outside uh, we don't know this about this one we assume this one is probably similar to this one but we've got at least two and possibly as many as four frames in here that we don't know the state of and so we can't just arbitrarily stick the lever in there and turn it and hope for the best because you know that could end up with a, a lot of <laughs> carnage frankly um, so and we don't want to leave empty space in these combs because if we do that uh, it's going to get clogged up with ivy honey and we're never going to get it out so we have a we've got a little problem to solve here now one one way around this one possible solution to this would be to um, take away these combs that are mostly capped, uh, brush the bees off them and extract them by, by the, 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 the normal flow method, if you like, but away from the hive. Yeah, that's, that's something we could do. And that's probably what we will do with these two central combs. The other two combs, um, well, we could also do that with, of course, but we want to make sure that this colony has got enough food for winter. Um, although the ivy is about to start, we assume, um, we can't guarantee that that's going to produce um, a good yield. And the problem, of course, with ivy is that because it's quite a hard honey, um, it, it does make life a bit difficult for the bees over winter. So we, we, we've come up with a possible kind of halfway house solution, and that it goes as follows. What we're gonna do is probably we'll take these two central combs out, we'll brush the bees off, and we'll extract them away from the hive. The rest of the, the combs, um, we're gonna put underneath this box. We're gonna actually swap these two boxes over. So we're gonna put the, the, um, the box with the flow frames underneath the brood box with a queen excluder on top of it, and that will, cause the bees to, uh, well at least their instinct will be to move the food from the bottom box, as it will be now, uh, into, the, into the top box. And in fact, we're, we're gonna add, uh, we've got a super ready over here, which we're gonna put on top. And so what we hope will happen is that the bees will themselves move the honey from these other frames into the super above the brood box. The queen excluder will stop the queen going down into the, fruit, into the flow box uh, and laying eggs, which is obviously something we don't want. Uh, and, it, and also because there is storage space now above them, that will discourage the bees from storing ivy in the bottom box. So, so that's, the, that's the current plan. So, 
Our first job is to remove the capped honey from there. And so we're going to use a high-tech bee brush. Which uh, is made up of um, a bunch of grass. And so I'm going to lift this carefully from the centre. And I'm going to brush the bees off this comb, getting no doubt stung in the process, but okay, so we've got most of the bees off. And we'll get bees off this side. So, okay, I'm going to take that away now. I'm going to put it over there and the, the remaining bees hopefully will find their way off it. Um, these bees are a little bit on the stingy side, so I'm, I'm actually going to put some um, gloves on for the next bit. Okay. So, I'll put my gloves on. I'm going to take the next one out. If you have a flow hive or are thinking of buying a flow hive, um, don't be necessarily put off by this. Uh, I think they are, um, I think they have their, their uses. I think they have, there are places where they work well, um, but you don't want to be near any oilseed rape. You don't want to be near ivy and you don't want to be near heather really to make these things work I think. So here we go with this one. So again you know 90% capped, uh, bees still working on it and uh, so we're going to brush bees off that and get a lot of them off just by shaking. I'll take that over there. Okay, so the next combs. We do want to make sure that bees have enough honey for winter. Um, I'm not a big fan of taking all the bees' honey and feeding them sugar. I've never done that routinely. So I would say what's that's about, what, 75% capped maybe. Um, bees are still working on it. So we're going to let them have those four. Gonna give them a bit of space. speed up the process of them removing the honey from these frames, what I'm going to do is just score the surface like this with my hoe tool. That's going to expose honey to the, to the air and to the bees of course and oops I'm going to have mangled a bee there. What it does is makes it easier for them to get the honey out of these cells. It also encourages them to do so because they hate having honey exposed to the air. Have I put that in the wrong way around? I have, haven't I? And it doesn't matter too much, but I will put it the right way around. There's virtually nothing capped there. God, these things are well in. Okay. Just 
trying not to injure bees but right so I'm gonna close that box temporarily where's its top and the face plate is here and there's another piece oh, yeah. Uh, so what I'm going to do is take that top box off, put it on the stand, take the bottom box off, put it on the stand, clean the floor a bit, put the what was the top box back on the bottom, then put the crane excluder on, then put the brood box back on top of that, and then put the super on top of everything else. And I'm going to have to do a little bit of um, improvisation because the super is actually made for the slightly wider version of the Langstroth than the one we've got here so all right okay so let's do it kind of wishing I put a proper suit on. <laughs> you may laugh, young man. <laughs> you may laugh. I'm going to put a suit on. Right, this is Phil Chandler, properly dressed this time. So, um, what we're going to do is put that on top of there. So. It, we might get away with this actually there's just I'll, I'll double check but there's just the thickness of the wood I think just accommodates the, um, the one underneath so what we've done so far we've put a super on here on top of the brood box um, and then this is going to go on top of that in a minute but the idea of this is that, that this is all empty, this is all drawn comb so with any luck they'll take the honey from the flow super and transport it up through the brood box into this one I mean that's, that's what we're hoping obviously you know <laughs> bees do their own thing, have their own ideas but that's the plan Oh, there's a mesh floor there, that's what it is. Okay, let's get to know. Of course, they're facts will last really, shouldn't I? But uh, I've done it now. So, uh... <clears throat> With apologies to any bees that I accidentally squashed. <laughs> Thank you. 
once upon a time this box had castellations in it but they've um, mostly disappeared but that's okay Still work. we may have to put a, a thin strip of something or other down the edges here just to uh, make sure no wasps can climb in or any of the robber bees or so of course this crown ball is going to be slightly too small now. What I think I will do in fact is to put a piece of Reflectix as a, as a complete cover to this super and then put that on top of it to hold it down. Actually that's probably good enough isn't it? Okay, so to summarise what we've done here, um, we've taken two frames out of the flow, which have now got bees all over them again, of course, but we'll deal with that in a minute. Um, we're going to extract the honey from those. We've left four frames in the bottom here, spaced them out a bit. We've scored them to, to expose the honey. And what we're hoping is now going to happen is that the bees are going to take the honey from this box into the brood box and also into the super up here which is under yeah just under the roof uh, that way they'll store the honey in the place where they want it over winter there's no restriction on them going between here and here there's no queen excluder up here the queen excluder is down here to stop the queen laying in the flow in the flow combs for want of a better word um, because that we definitely don't want that to be happening so we, we, we want the queen to lay in this box and it doesn't matter if she strays up and lays in this box a bit. We definitely don't want her laying down here because uh, for a start this is only, uh, this is the same size roughly as drone cone. Um, so she's not going to want even want to lay workers in there. But we don't want her laying anything in that box because that will be removed as soon as it's empty. Um, so over winter they're going to be on effectively brood and a half, they're going to be on this box and this box. Uh, there will be honey in here, there will be even more honey up there, they should be fine for the winter. Um, the flow hive, well, what can we say? It worked reasonably well this year. We'll go over and have a look at these again. We can see that they've, they've put away quite a decent amount of honey in these frames and we can extract that. We can dust the bees off here and we can extract this as um, would be done uh, you know, inside a flow hive normally without removing these. But you, know, you, you understand, I hope, the reasons why we had to take these out. Um, so that's about it for, for this session and uh, we will video our extraction process as well, I hope. Three, two, one. This is Phil Chandler, and I'm standing here beside a float uh, float hive. It's not again. <laughs> <laughs>